Ever wondered if that neon coloured pre-workout concoction is really the secret sauce to supercharged gains or if it's just another fitness fad? Well, the supplement industry is worth an estimated $140 billion, with the pre-workout market being approximately 10% of that. We can often think that pre-workout supplementation is reserved only for the college age gym TikToker who hogs the bench press, you know, the ones with the broccoli haired haircut. But in reality, anybody who cares about exercise performance can benefit from specific pre-workout supplementation. If you're new around here and wondering why the hell you should listen to me or take my word welcome to the channel my name is adam i'm a registered performance nutritionist i'm doing a doctorate in human performance and i'm a mediocre athlete in this channel we care about breaking through the noise of health and performance to bring you practical advice if that sounds interesting then consider subscribing now my first experience with pre-workout supplementation goes back to about 16 years ago when i was a teenager i didn't have much money because i didn't have a job but i saved up some pocket money for something called no explode and it was a hell of an experience like most 16 year olds at the time i didn't drink coffee so bar the odd can of Pepsi, caffeine was far into my body. I vividly recall my first experience. I consumed about half a scoop and within 10 minutes, I literally felt like Robocop as I cycled to the gym. It was basically just the effects of having three espressos at once, never having consumed caffeine before. And from that point on, I think pre-workouts just became a staple of my supplement stack. And because I felt wired, I assumed that this was having a positive impact on my training. In fact, over the years, pre-workout supplements became a part of my gym ritual that I actually really looked forward to. So through the years, my definition of what a good pre-workout supplement was, was in entirely based off of how it made me feel. So of course, when the now infamous Jack 3D or Craze supplements were in circulation and everybody was consuming them, I thought I had found the holy grail. I specifically remember this one Christmas, I'd come home from France where I was studying at the time and I was on my way driving to the gym, listening to trance music. The combination of the music and the Craze or Jack, I can't remember which one I was taking at the time, gave me this overwhelming sense of euphoria. And it wasn't until years later, after criminal investigations, did I learn that the reason everyone loved these supplements so much was because they contained meth-like substances. As my knowledge evolved and I became more interested in the science behind all of these, I began asking the question, what actually works? So that is what we're going to be looking at today. So when we ask ourselves if something works, we really need to dig deeper and ask, what does something working actually mean? And context is really important here. If working means feeling stimulated out of your mind, like you've taken some sort of party drug at a rave, then I could say that the Jack 3D and the craze worked really, really well. But if working means improving your half marathon PB or one at max on the bench press, then that's that's talking about something completely different. So to make this simple, we'll break this down into two forms of exercise, short duration, explosive exercise, like weightlifting or sprinting and long duration exercise, such as running or cycling, etc. Of course, there are many forms of exercise that combine the two, such as CrossFit, boxing, Jiu Jitsu, football, etc. But we'll keep it simple for now. We'll define the phrase of do they work as whether they have a positive impact on the performance of that particular sport or exercise. In this video, I'm specifically talking about ingredients or single ingredients so that you can look at a label of a pre-made concoction or pre-workout and determine the quality for yourself or simply make your own pre-workout from the ingredients. I'm doing this as opposed to breaking down pre-workout formulations made by companies because there are literally thousands of those. Now, the first and foremost obvious ingredient is going to be caffeine. According to this 2014 paper, approximately 85% of the US adult population consume caffeinated beverages every single day. So the chances are, if you're watching this, you probably consume them too. Caffeine works as a central nervous stimulator and blocks adenosine, a chemical that drives sleepiness. It also increases the activity of certain neurotransmitters such as acetylcholine, serotonin and dopamine and is likely why it can give us a sense of alertness and well-being. Caffeine also increases motor unit recruitment which leads to more forceful contractions and therefore improves strength and power. Motor units are basically just certain brain cells and muscle fibers associated with those brain cells. In the weight room, caffeine has a moderate effect on one repetition max and the number of reps that someone can get within any given set and there are a number of meta-analysis showing these benefits. It also appears that in longer term studies, caffeine maintained its effects, with this paper showing the caffeinated group gained roughly double the strength in squat and bench compared to the placebo group over a six week period. It is important to note that these were untrained subjects and we often see some pretty crazy results with untrained populations. There's lots of strong evidence of caffeine consumption improving endurance exercise performance too, from rowing, running, to cycling, even skiing, but the mechanisms of how it does this are not really that well understood. There's even data to show that it improves high jump and how far you can throw something. On average, in endurance sports, you're looking at about a two to 6% improvement, which doesn't seem like a lot, but according to this paper, a 2.1% increase in the half marathon pace would bring you from the 97 fastest in the world to number one fastest, at least at the time of publication. The dosage to obtain these effects is probably higher than most people think. Three to six milligrams of caffeine per kilo of body weight is the sweet spot. To put this into perspective, if someone weighed 100 kilos or 220 pounds, that's the equivalent of up to four cans of Monster Energy. That would give me a panic attack and keep me awake 
take for a week. Luckily, this recent meta-analysis found that even smaller dosages such as one to two milligrams per kilo body weight can have ergogenic effects. Given caffeine has a half-life of up to nine hours, meaning it can stay in your blood for a long period of time, combine that with its major impact on sleep, I personally recommend starting it with lower dosages and not consuming any caffeine after noon. Contrary to what many people do and drink an energy drink right before they work out, caffeine peaks in the blood at about 60 to 90 minutes post-consumption. So that's roughly the period of time you want to allow before you train after consumption. Personally, I use caffeine most days, but given its profound effect on my sleep, I rarely take it before exercise unless I'm training very, very early. This second supplement on my pre-workout list is citrulline. This is an amino acid found in foods such as watermelon and cucumber. Now, for many years, companies did and many still do include a supplement called arginine in their pre-workout formulas. The idea behind this is that increased arginine in the blood increases nitric oxide and vasodilation. In other words, allowing your blood vessels to open and allowing more oxygen to get through. That's not to be confused with nitrous oxide, which is often used as a dental anesthetic or to boost the horsepower of a car, as you may have seen in those terrible movies, which I once loved called Need for Speed. The problem with supplemental arginine is that it gets broken down by the liver before it has time to reach the bloodstream. So it's fairly ineffective. Citrulline avoids this. So in essence, it's a more effective way of increasing blood arginine than supplementing with arginine itself. It has a few other benefits as well, such as clearing waste products in the bloodstream, all which come together to improve muscular endurance, but not maximal strength. This particular meta-analysis showed that six to eight grams of citrulline malate was on average able to help lifters squeeze out a few more reps in the gym, which over time could lead to more muscle gain. And while there does seem to be some evidence for its place in endurance sport, for every study showing its positive effect, there are at least one study showing it has no effect. And on this channel, we're not about creating hype, but rather giving you a true and accurate representation of the available science. Now, I personally do take this before every type of exercise that I do. It does seem to reduce muscle soreness as well and lactate levels, which for me is important because it allows for faster recovery. As a side note, it can also help you improve your pump in the gym and reduce blood pressure, which are nice side effects to have. Dosages in most studies are around six to eight grams of either citrulline malate or L-citrulline 60 minutes before training. The two forms haven't been compared against one another, so I would say just pick one. Citrulline is not definitely going to give you game-changing effects, but if you're looking for that last edge, I would personally consider it. Another supplement that works similar to citrulline are nitrates, which are compounds found in vegetables such as radishes and beetroot. Although it works through a different pathway, we get a similar outcome to citrulline in that it increases blood flow in the body and therefore oxygen delivery. To put it simply, a recent meta-analysis by Alvarez and colleagues stated that dietary nitrate consumption before exercise could increase muscular endurance by about 4% and endurance exercise by about 12%. So larger benefits for the runners over the lifters. It's worthwhile to note that you cannot supplement with isolated nitrates due to the safety regulations around sodium nitrate. However, almost all studies use beetroot juice or concentrate containing 400 to 1500 milligrams of nitrates about two to three hours before exercise. Personally, I try to take this every single day in the form of a tall glass of 100% beetroot juice. This gives me a couple hundred milligrams of nitrates and chronic supplementation may be more beneficial. Again, similar to citrulline, this has a blood pressure long effect. And as you can see a trend here, supplements that increase blood flow tend to be good for cardiovascular health. Most pre-made pre-workout supplement blends will not contain concentrated beetroot extract or at least enough of it as it can be quite expensive, but you can increase your nitrate content in your diet, which will also have a beneficial effects. Here are a list of good sources. On a side note, antibacterial mouthwash has a negative impact on nitrate cycling, so you may want to avoid that if you start considering beetroot juice. It is worth mentioning that although both citrulline and nitrate work in similar ways, there's evidence to show that combining the two can have synergistic effects on performance. Now, most of us have experienced that burning sensation in our muscles when we train, and that's correlated to an increase in muscular pH or acidity. We can offset that to an extent by consuming another supplement on this list, which is sodium bicarbonate, more commonly known as baking soda, not to be confused with baking powder. On the whole, it appears that sodium bicarbonate consumption approximately 60 to 90 minutes before training can have a small impact on endurance performance, but little to no impact on strength. I'm personally not a huge fan of it, and I don't take this for several reasons. Number one is that the research participants consume a very large quantity, anywhere from 0.3 to 0.5 grams per kilogram of body weight in order for it to be effective. And that comes with a really high risk of gastrointestinal issues. The second reason I am not a fan of it is in the name, sodium. If you're consuming an effective dose, you'll likely be taking over twice the daily recommendation of sodium per day. And while athletes do sweat more, your kidneys still need to process all that sodium, which may not be good for long-term cardiovascular health or anybody that's concerned about blood pressure. Other ingredients that get a worthwhile mention are tart cherry extract and taurine. Both of these have been shown to improve acute performance, but there is very limited data right now, so I would be hesitant to recommend these as a supplement. And although not a supplement, carbohydrates before exercise can have major impacts, but that will really come down to the individual circumstances. Sodium
Sodium or salt also seems to be trending lately as an effective tool to use before exercise. But in reality, there isn't any research showing a performance benefit from doing this. Now, you might have noticed that I've left out two very popular ingredients in many pre-workout formulas, creatine and beta alanine. And while both of these are very, very effective supplements, they technically don't have any immediate effects, meaning they only begin to have effects when taken over a prolonged period of time. So while you can take them pre-workout before you train, won't necessarily make any difference compared to taking them at another point in the day. So I don't really consider them pre-workout supplements. If you want me to cover these two in another video, just let me know in the comments. There are of course hundreds and hundreds of ingredients that companies use in their pre-workout formula blends, but in reality, very few have solid human evidence behind them. Personally, I use citrulline and beetroot juice before I train, which also covers my carbohydrate consumption. And sometimes I have a coffee. Some people also like to take focus enhancing supplements before they train or exercise. Whether they have performance enhancing effects are debatable, but if you want to learn more about those, then I recommend checking out this video that I made on the productivity drink, Newtonic.